Well, in this video, we are going to talk about force and we are going to discuss about scalar and vector quantities. So what is a scalar quantity in physics? What is vector quantity when you talk about physics? Now, a vector quantity, as you can see, is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Now, magnitude here means size. So if you have a quantity that has both the size and direction or the magnitude and direction, that is a, a vector quantity. Now, when you talk about size, we cannot say the exact uh, portion of a given quantity. For instance, you could talk about a quantity being 20 uh, grams or uh, you could talk about a quantity being 50 meters and so on. But the same quantity, if it has to be a vector quantity, then you have to state its direction. So you could say this is a 50 meters length and moving towards given direction, moving towards the north, towards the south and so on. So when you talk about a quantity and you are talking about the direction it's going to take, then that becomes a vector quantity. Now we could also talk about the scalar quantity. Scalar quantity deals with the magnitude only or the size. We don't talk about direction. So when you talk about the size of an, a quantity, then that becomes um, the scalar quantity. Now, an example of a vector quantity is force. Uh, force is newtons, so it's in newtons, and uh, because we could say this is a force of 20 newtons towards this direction, towards the x-axis direction, towards the north or the y-axis direction, and so on. So when the moment we state the direction and the size, then that becomes a vector quantity. Now mass is kgs, and uh, we don't have the direction. We cannot say this is 20 grams or 20 kgs towards a given direction now that this becomes a scalar quantity uh, length is in meters and if you give uh, a given quantity like uh, two meters you cannot really specify the direction where the two meters is going and therefore that becomes a scalar quantity now we could also uh, talk more about vector quantities because in physics we are going to notice that most of the things that we are going to do we are going to deal them with them in terms of vector quantities and now let us know how to find what we call the resultant the resultant force so find the resultant resultant force or what we call the effective force uh, for all these quantities that you can see here all of them are vector quantities and let's know how to find the effective or the resultant forces now the first one we have is we have uh, 10 newtons moving to the left direction and uh, a pool of 20 newtons to the right direction so we're going to have a resultant force here now this is going to this direction this is to this direction the final one because this is bigger than this one then we're going to have a 10 towards this direction 10 and you have to show the magnitude so this is here 10 newtons towards that direction because a 10 here is going to cancel a 10 here so that will remain with a 10 towards the uh, one direction now here the second example we have to the uh, left 8 newtons to the right 8 uh, 2 newtons so how do we uh, find the resultant force now if 2 newtons are moving to the right and 8 newtons are moving to the left it means we have a, a, a we, if we remove the two that is moving toward that direction, we are going to move with a, a six newtons moving towards this direction. So that's going to be eight minus two because they are moving towards uh, uh, opposite directions. Now, also, if we talk about this one, now we have two forces that are moving towards the same direction. So that is a five newtons and a two newtons that are moving towards the same direction. So how do we treat that now? This is five newtons, two newtons moving towards the same direction. Therefore, we are going to add the two and therefore we're going to have a, a longer one that is seven newtons. Now, in the last one that is interesting, we have two forces, three newtons and four newtons pulling towards the left. And then we have two forces, three newtons and uh, uh, two newtons moving towards the other direction. Now, if we sum this, because uh, if we sum them, then we are going to have a resultant of uh, seven newtons here. And if we sum here, we're going to have a resultant of five newtons and that is five newtons. And finally, you notice that to the right, we have five newtons, to the left, we have uh, uh, seven newtons. So the resultant force is going to be on the left, two newtons. It has to be shorter to show that, uh, so two newtons to the left, 
to show that uh, uh, the resultant force is going to be on the left side or to the left side. So that's how we work with the vector quantities. Please remember to follow more videos for more uh, information about scale-up quantities and vector quantities in physics. Remember to share this video, subscribe and also like.